Hi there and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths, a Core 4 Maths A level video on partial fractions to do with three distinct linear factors. As always, check out the YouTube channel, Twitter or Google Plus for more help with your maths. Um, this is tutorial 4. It's relevant to the Edexcel A level syllabus but should be applicable to most other Core Maths modules. <clears throat> Our specification says we deal with rational functions and partial fractions. We've done a bit of that in the previous video. And it says here partial fractions to include denominators such as uh, AX plus B, CX plus D and EX plus F. So we've done where there are two, now we're doing where there are three, and they're all different. Okay, so here's the rule that you need for partial fractions. An expression with three distinct linear factors on the denominator can always be split up into partial fractions as follows. If you have an expression of this form, you can write it as a number over the first linear factor plus another number over the second linear factor plus another number over, over the third linear factor and those numbers you need to determine in these type of questions. One thing, again, very important to bear in mind here, at most on top here we're a quadratic, because um, the highest power is x squared, and at most on bottom here we are a cubic. So the top has a smaller degree or order than the bottom, it only works in these sort of cases. Okay, so uh, straight on to an example is the only way to do these questions. So example one, uh, express the following in partial fractions. Now, before we launch into it, we always have a think. The tops are quadratic, the bottoms are cubic. The top has a lower order than the bottom, good. And it has three distinct linear factors. Therefore, we're gonna start off by saying that two x squared subtract six x plus 20, divided by x plus one, x plus two, x subtract six, well, that is identical to, can be written using this rule as some number over the first factor plus some number over the second factor plus some number over the third factor, where A, B and C we need to find out. Now, if we were to make the two sides have the same denominator, we would end up with the following identity, which I'm sure from the previous videos you'll understand where this comes from we would have 2x squared subtract 6x plus 20 must be identical to a multiplied by these factors x plus 2 x subtract 6 plus b multiplied by these factors x plus 1 x subtract 6 plus c multiplied by these factors x plus 1 x plus 2 okay so what are we going to do now well we're going to use our substitution method going to be clever with our choice of a. If we let a, oh sorry, with our choice of x, let x first of all, why don't we let x be 6? And this side here, we can work out on our calculator what 2 uh, x squared minus 6x plus 20 is when x is equal to 6. And we get 56 on this side. So this side would be 56. This would disappear, and this would disappear. And we would have c times 7 times 8. So we would get 56c. And that would tell us, dividing by 56, c would have to be 1. OK, let's let x now be negative 1. This side would be equal to 28. And this side, uh, well, this would disappear and this would disappear, so we'd only be left with this. It would be a times 1 times negative 7, which would be negative 7a. Dividing both sides by negative 7a, a would be equal to negative 4. And lastly, we would let x be equal to negative 2. If we let x be equal to negative 2, this side we would get 40, this would disappear, this would disappear, we get b times negative 1 times negative 8, which would be 8, just 8b, therefore b would be equal to 40 divided by 8, which is 5. Okay, and therefore we could write out 
our final answer here. We would write it in another line. We would rewrite this here. We would therefore say that this here is therefore equal to the following. It's equal to negative 4 over x plus 1 plus 5 over x plus 2 plus 1 over x track 6. And we've written in partial fractions. Sometimes you might write this afterwards um, just so that the positives are first, but it doesn't really matter. That there would be how you do it. And that's it for this uh, video. So it's a very similar idea, apart from when there are three distinct terms on the bottom, you can split it up in three ways with a number over the first factor, number over the second, number over the third, and just use the method of substitution to find A, B, and C. And we're done. So therefore, um, just for further homework then, read chapter one, do example uh, three on page five. Make sure you read that and understand that. And then do exercise 1c. There are two questions with three parts each. Make sure you do all of them and tune in for the next video. Thank you for watching.